Uh, my name is Svetoslav, hard to pronounce, just Slava for everyone else. Um, I work at Wargaming Research and Development Department, which is uh, making a new ways to create games or support existing games, and uh, especially in, in the very first cycle that we call a zero cycle, um, in terms of creativity, like what this game is about, who is going to play this game, uh, which market are you going to release it on, and uh, what's the business case behind it. Um, for the game, we have a methodology called GameCraft, and it's a method to uh, make your idea, if you have it already, uh, a strong one with um, sufficient core pillars, with uh, some features you generate, and uh, with some, um, let's say, address to investor, publisher, client, player, whoever else. Uh, to do this, we create a series of brainstorm methodology, which I'll be talking about right here. So first things first, what is it? Uh, it's a framework. It's a framework that consists of several steps. Uh, and it helps you to create a new game idea if you don't have any. And uh, it guides you from step one, step zero, uh, until the concept, until the concept that you can put, for example, on a Steam page. Uh, it helps you build a foundation for game design, for game development, to create some fans, some limitations. Like uh, George Orwell said that art is bad when it's not limited. Uh, and also it creates some pitch content, like features, core pillars. You'll, you'll see it on the way. Also, if you already have a game idea, if you have some kind of a concept, but you're kind of unsure, you're uh, uncertain about its viability on the market, it will help you too, because it will strengthen what's uh, good in your idea and will cut out what's really bad. So I don't think we have much time, so I'll have to go on. So the process is uh, three large stages. Each consists of three uh, consecutive uh, steps. First one is to formulate the game idea, like what is this game? What, what, what are you going to start with? The second one is to uh, take a look at the market and uh, through a small research uh, brainstorming session to find out what's, uh, what's strong about your idea. Who is the audience of your game, potential game? And finally, uh, through this brainstorm, you will distill and come up to a finalized idea of your game, which you will work further. Further, you will uh, identify your idea's uh, strength points and weaknesses, and you will have to address them through a brainstorm as well. And uh, you will identify solutions to the problems you will uncover, and you will find ways to uh, take the upper hand on the opportunities that you will have uncovered. And after that, after you have these solutions, you will create a core pillars, which is a kind of an abstract way to say a foundation of a game. Finally, you will be wrapping up, which means like you will be proving your uh, idea concept made of core pillars through uh, coming up with features, through uh, coming up with the details about your game that will be describing it, and finally make a one-line description. And uh, you're not going to do it alone. You will need, uh, first you will, f for the first st stage, you will have to do it on your own. You can uh, use your team, but it's really not, not good. But your team will have to be there, uh, like three to four people, not much. Uh, that will help you through stages two and three. And of course, you will need a whiteboard to write down all the ideas you find, all the brainstorming things, and uh, internet, because you will have to address, uh, make researches right on the way. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds like uh, complicated and really not, not feel good without an example. So we have one. Uh, it's an example that we created specifically for this uh, presentation uh, to see if it's possible, you know, to, to do it like from scratch without making any additions, without making any uh, artificial uh, solutions. So first step, game idea. Uh, you have to formulate the game idea and uh, you can do it on your own, but uh, if you don't, if you lack some things, you can try to think of, like, you have a popular game, like the game you love, I know, PUBG, for example. What, what, what is uh, absent from PUBG that you like? Uh, well, there are companies who already answered this question, Epic Games and uh, Respawn. Uh, what can be mixed together? Like, you take two favorite games and, th and see if it can be mixed together, like Apple Pie. Uh, 
uh, what's impossible to design. Like you come up with the with the idea that is impossible design to design like by by default because it's like game which is not suitable for the platform. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, it's possible. And that's what we chose for the example. Uh, classic point-and-click adventure for smartphones. So what is classic adventure game for those who don't know? It's a game where you have a screen, several screens, a character which moves through the screens, and you can operate with the objects, talk to NPCs, pick up objects, use them on whatever you want, and use it with a point-and-click device, which is mouse and make it on a smartphones. So it's kind of contradictory. And you don't really see a lot of adventures on smartphones. And that's the problem. That's the uh, game idea that we want to solve in this example. So next step is market analysis. Uh, you will have to find a market fit. You have a, you have a game idea. And now you really want to think, uh, who is going to play this game? Uh, uh, to do this, you have to take all the game elements like uh, this classic point-and-click adventure, you take a classic, you take point-and-click adventure, you take smartphones, and see what's, what's so special about it in the market sense. OK. So we started, uh, as, as I said, with three uh, elements. Uh, classic, like what is classic adventure games? How, they do, how do they perform nowadays? Uh, and by the research, which is a simple, simple Google search, uh, we found out that uh, most adventures are pixel art, or it's new releases from uh, genre veterans, like uh, the, the, these guys, Double Fine or someone, and also a lot of re HD remakes. Uh, for the adventure games on smartphones, uh, which was our second uh, Google search, uh, we found out that lots of ports and remakes, like zero new games. OK, maybe several new games, but they do not perform at all. And, uh, Every, every adventure game is sold for a fixed price, which is also a detail you should uh, take a notion for the future researches. And finally, smartphones. You ask about what is smartphones? What's the audience there? You know, the, the answer is obvious, but you will have to write it down just for the sake of it, just so you know, yes, it's lots of money, lots of audience, hard to get in, and you will need it in a further research. OK, so the, the final step of this stage is to feed the idea to the market. So you have the game idea, you have uh, some insights from the market, and now you have to see, uh, is there anything I have to change about the game to feed the market? Or maybe I should leave it at that. In our example, we, we change a bit. So classic, when we say classic. Classic is something like, OK, it's a pixel art. It's lots of pixel hunting. It's uh, hard cases of puzzling. It's a uh, really unrealistic logic of developers, designers, this kind of thing. And it's like not playable. But nostalgic is what really people are looking for. So we see lots of remakes. We see lots of ports for smartphones. So people are looking for what they have experienced back in the past, like in their childhood. So maybe we should make a game that will, be, that will appeal to these, to these old past experiences. So that's why we changed to nostalgic. Now, the second stage starts with the game idea facts. Uh, you have to take your game idea, and now that's where you invite your team, like three, four people, and they will help you to uh, drop in all um, associations they have with each game element idea, like take a classic, what are related trends in classic, what risks does it create to make this game this way, uh, what exactly do you associate with it, uh, what, what emotions do you have when you say, like, adventure on smartphone? Pfft. Let's see what we have here. OK. So for each element, we have several um, facts. For nostalgia, of course, it's old school. So it's like when I, I see a uh, nostalgic game, I know it's nostalgic because it has some, uh, let's say, references to the old games. Like if I see a pixel art pirate, I know, oh, it's a Monkey Island ripoff. I don't know. Uh, the setting doesn't matter. Uh, it's a good thing because, like, if you make a racing game, you are restricted by some like realistic or sci-fi. You won't make a fantasy racing game. It's not really suitable. Uh, but narrative is what matters for adventure games, whether it's smartphone, PC, or whatever. Uh, and it's a fact too. Uh, for the adventures, it's a niche genre, which is well obvious as well. But you still have to write it down. Uh, adventures depend on the art quality. You will not really make an adventure that has like uh, bulky lines or vector art. 
Uh, and top art is, of course, uh, weighs a lot. Uh, and adventures are playable offline, which is a fact you have to take in, uh, in effect as well. Sound design is important because it's part of the atmosphere, and adventure games, they are uh, appeal by the atmosphere they create. And uh, adventures are suitable for series of different adventures. Um, for smartphones, uh, point and click are native controls for smartphones, which is uh, obvious as well, but you will have to realize that, yes, it is. Uh, whether you click with mouse or tap with your finger on the screen, it's, it's really easy. And uh, there are some technical things, like screen, play, playable screens are up to six inches, because really not many people are playing their big iPads. Uh, most gaming is happening on the, your smartphones. Uh, short sessions and extremely competitive market is also uh, properties of the smartphones. Uh, AR is the thing, as well as geotagging, uh, which is, yeah, it's like a new trend. We just write it down to see if we can use it in the further. And for some miscellaneous facts, is like uh, it's easy to port to PC because it's scalable. And uh, audience are grown-ups, which we uncovered from the previous. Uh, research, market research, and also we found out that this audience might also have children, which they can involve in the adventure games. So maybe we could use this too. Now, we have these facts, and we have to now attribute them to two types. It's either a problem to solve for your game idea, or it's an opportunity that you will have to use to gain an upper hand. In our case, we get this list of 18 facts uh, distributed with uh, like about equally problems and uh, opportunities. Opportunities are green. And here's how we solve them. So we take each fact and see how it can be solved. If it's a problem, what is the solution? If it's opportunity, how do we use it? So in first, uh, first old school stylization is definitely an opportunity to use in the niche genre. Uh, setting doesn't matter is good too because we can go to space or go to pirate ship or biker theme, whatever. Narrative matters, it's heavy because you will have to contribute a lot. And captivating story is, is, a, is something, a solution to both. So setting doesn't matter and captivating story can be made in any setting. But narrative matters, so it's in the same solution. So we try to merge them as much as possible. Uh, usage of a known IP is a good idea if you have money or uh, if you use the IP of like older than 75 years. Uh, 30 plus audience, um, yeah, it's a good uh, it's a good idea to um, to use so niche genre to address them and uh, also audience have grown up, which we also know. Uh, big details is for a design. It's a solution for design-related uh, problems. Episodic model can be can all be used in your monetization model, or it can be used on your delivery model. Like uh, you uh, release several packs, uh, no more than 100 megabytes on uh, Google Play, and you get more downloads if you would have it otherwise. Uh, offline is a good thing too. It's a solution to at least two points here for the art, which you can download the whole art in, in a package and play it offline. Um, graphic novel style is uh, something that we try to understand about the sound design, that people playing smartphones, they tend to not use the sound at all. But the adventure, it creates sound. It, it uses sound as, as an atmospheric approach. So we decided that graphic novel, like a comics, uh, could be used in the adventure, like using words with these uh, starry clouds like bang, boom, this kind of thing. It could be used in any adventure. Um, PC second is a technical thing, like we can make a PC as a second platform after mobile, which is another market. Uh, readable design also design-related problem. And micro stories is also the way to deliver games through a, uh, as the smartphone users, they tend to play for maybe two, five minutes long. And how do you make an adventure that will uh, allow you to get deep in the adventure from the seconds and end up in two, five minutes uh, having a satisfying end. It's, it's not easy, but micro-story approach might work. And rating 13 plus is for the kids. Well, why not? Uh, for the AR and geotagging, we tried to use it, but we didn't come to any significant conclusion how to use it. Now, core pillars. It's, the, it's when you merge these solutions that, you, that helped you to fight the problems and uh, use the opportunities. And now you have to go like an abstract level, upper abstract, to 
create a foundation for your game. Uh, you will see now. So you take solutions and you try to merge the closest one, like for example in terms of audience. What kind of audience should there be if it's for both adults and kids? So it's easy. The solution here, the core pillar, is for kids and adults, which means that in design, in development, in marketing, everywhere, you will have to address both audiences. And you cannot, I don't know, go lower than uh, 13, and you cannot make anything like 18+, plus because it's the core pillar. You cannot over, overwrite it. Uh, for the graphics, uh, since graphic novel style is there and old school stylization is there, Probably it should be done in a comics way, um, but with use of old style um, themes. N not the approach itself, but themes. And also for the old style themes is one story, lots of archetypes. Because a captivating story and micro stories can be done as one. Um, let's say you have a pirate, you have a biker, you have a space cadet, you have a fantasy king, something like that. And each one character has their own mm, well, character, and they uh, go through the same adventure again and again, but with different characters, there are diff different, um, let's say, dialogues with NPCs, uh, different ways to use, different commentaries coming from them. So it's one story, but lots of archetypes that can go through this story. Uh, here, if you have played, there was an indie game called uh, Die With Glory, which was quite similar to it. Next is the art-driven problems. The art problems, uh, like you have to use big details and readable design, and you can just put a core pillar as art-driven, which means you'll have to do a lot with, uh, work a lot with your artists uh, to make it so it's readable and uh, big and approachable in general. Episodic model is something for a monetization probably, or uh, for a method of uh, delivery content, uh, delivering content, so it's an episodic game, so you can release a several micro-adventures, and then next pack you release several else, and uh, this way you sell more, more in one. Also offline, nothing to do here, it's just an offline game, which is a plus for many players. As for usage of known IP and PC second, it's, it's a matter to discuss, because uh, usage of IP uh, may follow after you, you will discuss the budget, for example. And for PC Second, it's the same thing, like do we have money to make a PC as the second platform? So it's an off-topic, and about off-topics, we will talk later. Features. Now that you have core pillars, uh, you will have to create several features based on these core pillars. It will help you, it will illustrate your design, uh, it will illustrate your concept to, to make sure that it really works. And uh, actually, the the biggest takeaway from it is not the actual features that will, uh, you will create, but the process that you will, in, in the process of brainstorm, you will realize that yes, there is a potential in this game because you can come up with interesting and uh, viable features. In our case, it was something like that. So uh, we have a game for kids and adults, so the humor and adventures are all about humors, uh, should be something very, very close, very home-based. So like Simpsons or Futurama, this kind of thing. For the graphic novel stylization, uh, you can come up with something that, uh, that uses this method. Like you can make an adventure that's not uh, built screen by screen, but strip by strip. Or you can make it uh, uh, funny situations that people can share through the social networks. And in this case, we use two methods. One is create new feature that is based on the core pillar, or if you already have had feature, for example, when you were discussing facts and you came up, oh, look, there is a great feature that we could use. Yeah, okay, but leave it for now. And by that stage, you will have to uncover all the features you had uh, come to earlier and see if they can be validated through a core pillar. And if it does, it's good. Now, uh, one story, lots of archetypes. Uh, it's like you can dis describe it as the, we have a character, we have a situation, we put it there and see what happens. Uh, also, it allows you to enter collections, which is good for mobile gaming, which uh, works on retention, things like that. And you can uh, add some heroes endings, things like that. For art driven, well, as I said, sound effects that are vi visualized through uh, special clouds and cell shading art style, which is really approachable, especially for a uh, younger audience. And the episodic game, as I said, it's easy to sell episodes and characters. Now, 
we're approaching the maybe one of the most uh, useful stages here. It's where you will describe your game answering several questions. And if you cannot answer these questions, then probably you have missed something. And if you did, you will have to start over or at least go back to the core pillar stage. So in our case, um, who? Who is, who is the principal character? And we have several characters. They are heroes of our nostalgia, like uh, these pirates, bikers, these kind of things. Uh, where, where does it happen? It, it's uh, the same story over again, but in adventures, in series of adventures that are happening and with different uh, settings and probably different endings. It's all up to you and your budget. How does it happen? What kind of tools do, do, we have, uh, do a player have? Mm, each hero has a personality and motive, so you may play every adventure with only two characters that you like and miss out like the rest of the content. No problem here. But the most important thing here is that the adventure must be beautiful and funny just because it's nostalgic. Uh, motivation is very important here because you will have to... Uh, you will have to tell a player why does he want to play your game at all. And here it is, it's completed up to 10 minute stories. So uh, you can tell him, okay, you're in a queue or you're in a public transport. Go on and play the game, you will finish it by, the, by your next stop. And also small events in a larger timeline creates um, a bigger narrative because it's several stories. It's like if you have seen uh, Love, Death and Robots, it's like many cartoons, each of, of its own significant, but overall they create this whole idea of these kind of cartoons. Uh, also, collecting heroes is also can be a motivation for uh, smartphone players. Social is where you put uh, whether you... Why, why would your players will want to share the game details with other people? Like, hey, look, I found this game, it's very nice, you should play it too. Or share funny pictures just for the sake of it. Or use memes and embed in them into game. It's all happen. It's all can be happen. And here's the final one, final step, is the short description. It's, um, it's where you have to use your skills to pack all your game idea, all that things that you have created, core pillars, features, uh, game description, everything in one sentence, in one up to two sentences. And you will have to describe like what's the essence of the game. It's like, like elevator five second pitch. You have only one breath in which you will have to describe your game. And here's what we got. Well, it's a bit bulky, but it's <laughs> as, as uh, packed as possible. So it's a beautiful ed episodic adventure game in a graphic novel art uh, style for adults aged 30 plus and their children about archetypical characters walking through the same story in different ways and for smartphones. Uh, that's how you pack the game. Uh, we have a good example of this is if you're on Steam, if you have seen the curator's reviews, which are packed in 160 symbols, that's how you should work. Uh, well, it took me 22 minutes, but in reality it took us five hours to come up to this. And uh, after this you will have uh, your pitch content, which is core pillars, uh, example of features, and short game description, which you can use it like as the entry point. Uh, so next steps are go on and uh, find an investor, or find and gather a team, or uh, write a user story, like uh, write a, a story about your character, how a player plays the game. Our Start creating a game design document. I mean, why not? But before you go, there are several things that you have to know, notion before you really start working with this game craft thing. You will need a team, at least from the stage two. Uh, you will need game designers, so people who know how to make games, because they will be able to tell you what's possible, what's not, what's on the market, or what's not possible like at all. Uh, you will need user advocates, so people who will work as a player, as potential players of your game. And you will need a moderator because you will have a lots of discussions. And some of these discussions will go sideways. And the moderator has to stop them and tell if it's off topic. And if it's off topic, you will have, the moderator has to decide if it's urgent, if it needs solution right now, if it's a blocker to the whole idea. Uh, go and make it now. If it's question that can be answered later, yeah, it's an off topic that you can answer later. It doesn't stop you from work. And side story is something that you come up with a, a great idea, but it's really different from what you're thinking about the, from your game idea. So you have to set it aside. And finally, the pros and cons of the whole uh, methodology is uh, 
The fewer people working on it is the better. Uh, it's a red ocean market because it uses the research from the market, the audience that exists there, but it also can be used as a finding a gap in this market, finding an audience that is not covered, but it's not a really a blue ocean. Uh, and also it generates useful information, which you will use further. And well, the obviously cons is that it's not a blue ocean market. You will not create a new PUBG, you will not create a new Minecraft. Well, not this way. And uh, moderation plays a vital role because discussions there will be lots. And research is more valuable than opinions because like, okay, I know I have played lots of games and I'm sure that this is the way we should do it. No, make a research first. Whew, that's it. Thank you very much, 25 minutes. Thank you very much. We still have some time for a couple of questions. <laughs> Question. Slava, thanks for the talk. Um, can you name at least a couple of titles that went through uh, this process and were published by R&D or Gaming or were uh, developed later? The, the, this, uh, this whole framework, it exists for more than a year now. Uh, there are no games that have been through this process like from scratch. I mean, not announced ones. The, the only game that has been uh, through this uh, cycle, uh, proving the game idea, was Caliber, which is to be released this year, I think. Uh, but it was the idea that was already there in development, so we just made sure that the idea is really hopeful and it works. Some more questions? Okay, I have a question. Sure. Uh, a tough one. Imagine that you are uh, working for a big company which has a budget but don't have good ideas. So what would be the best approach for searching for fresh ideas? Would it be how you explained the deep logical analysis of the market to find fresh ideas? Or would it be better, more efficient to find some indie small studio who already has some idea which proved itself and to, I know, buy them in? Well, it depends on your role in this big company. If you're if you can publish this small indie game, no problem. You go and publish it and you just uh, make sure they run through this process and uh, make sure that uh, the game idea is viable and strong. Yeah, the, so I, I was thinking more, is the logical analysis works better than intuition of the individual? Uh, in big companies now, in big companies you need numbers to prove your point. You need uh, at least to show that there is a gap. Like if you go and say, let's make World of Tanks but with uh, boots. What kind of game is this? But probably there is a niche like boot lovers or fetish players. You never know. So, so to convince uh, big uh, bosses, you still need some logical analysis. Yeah, that's why we you have to use some market analysis, just just scratching it a bit to to see if it's viable at least for for this. Like a quick Google search, and you see there is an audience, and you come to your boss and say, okay, there is an audience for this game. It's not just like my idea that I want to make. I, I see that there are people. And uh, in big companies, it's much, much more th than that because, as I said, we have a, a big zero cycle thing, and this is just a small part that con uh, concerns the game itself, not the market, not the business case, not the audience. It's just the initial game idea. Okay, cool. Any more questions? Okay. Okay. No. Um, if you're interested, um, I have uh, the like a manual of this thing. Uh, it's in Russian, so if you're Russian, you can come up to me and uh, give me your address, and I will send it to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Big applause. Thank you for Svetoslav.